one of Picasso's many victims is finally getting a little bit of justice. Okay, Moe's just eight, so we're going to lose him any minute. Oh, I swear he hates the camera now. I feel you, babe. Now, before I get into this story, I want to remind people that one of the reasons why we need comedians, storytellers, and artists is because Hannah Gatsby is the reason why I had any idea that Picasso was a predator and a purdle. Uh, it's, it, it, I had no idea. And he was put on my radar because of this Netflix special. And I, I'm sure I'm not the only one who was like, what? What? I didn't know that. This person who I went to the mu several museums of and was like told that he's amazing and is the person that I should worship as a genius. Oh, he forked teenagers? I'm sorry, graped teenagers? Wow, I don't like them anymore. I had no idea how much I don't like them till I looked them up. Today, this came across my news. And this was in the Guardian. Picasso Museum to show the work of Francoise Guillot. I don't know if I'm saying that right. I have literally never heard of her. Why? Because Picasso tried to destroy her career and succeeded at it for a while. So France who is, has a very bad reputation for not even acknowledging any of its crimes against humanity, Haiti, everything in its colonial past, uh, just can't, cannot, cannot comprehend, I'm sorry, will not deal with its colonial past pretty much at all. But look at this. Finally, it's like, well, maybe we got this one wrong. But before we get into how uh, there is a little bit of hope, right? Not only hope in that artists, all the women behind these men who were usually abused by these geniuses um, are finally much later, usually too late, getting some recognition. So uh, before we get into her story, more of the details of it in terms of how she was given any justice far too late. Let's let's talk about how awful Picasso was. I am sure he's even worse than I'm going to portray in this video. Uh, I learn something new every day. For instance, I learn from my comment section. For instance, I learned today thanks to several people on YooHoo telling me that Robert Downey Jr. broke Halle Berry's uh, arm. Uh, so uh, that video is coming soon. So I am sure I will learn even more in the comment section, but this is all I have found because I literally research and report and organize and storytell all day. And I, y'all help me so much with that, especially because I cover so many uh, artists and then my own personal story, blah, 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 blah. So this nasty old man, this nasty old man was a perv his whole life. Like until the day he died, he was a perv. And I am sure he has countless victims we will never know about. Because he liked to kidnap people and hide them and all kinds of stuff. And this, if you take, no, if there's no other takeaway from this video, it is please stop martyring yourself for men. Because this man destroyed the lives of countless women. And a lot of women think that, oh, well, you know, I I'll be spared. I'll be spared. You will never be spared. Even the ones who make it and who become the wife and all that stuff, they get it the worst. So uh, if a man is willing to destroy one woman, he is capable of destroying any woman. All women. Okay? The more you give to men, especially the creative geniuses, the more you will lose. So I saw this article. It was on historycollection.com and it's kind of like a roundup of how much this dude sucks because I probably could do like days, hours, years of research and still not understand how awful this man was. His own granddaughter thought he was an awful person and I'm going to give her a full quote in a bit. And the woman who is finally getting some justice is the only one who's ever left him, who walked away from this man because she refused to be a submissive woman. So and again, all these men, these red pill men, are obsessed with women submitting to men. Any man who thinks that a woman should submit to him is going to dominate her, is going to exploit her. I do not, I'm not a child. I do not need a leader. I also don't want to be the leader all the time, like a freaking mommy. I, uh, women deserve partners that they share the sh storms of life with, not a leader. Men are terrible leaders. I know that. I talk about this all the time. They literally get 
people killed in the outdoors all the time. That's what I learned working in the outdoors. So don't submit to men. They can't be trusted. They will ru ruin your life or take it. Not in this system. Not in this system. In her book about him, which was blocked by, Fra I'm going to get into, again, good things at the end of this. But I like to leave, I like to end stories with hope or calls to action or something. So that's coming. But first we got to go into the dark places of Picasso. So his <laughs> partner of like nine years, I think, said he had a total absence of empathy and love. His lack of remorse and facile realiza ra rationalizations for hurting others. A lust for seduction as a form of exercising power over women. So they'll submit. Duplicity and manipulation as a way of life. The pattern of idealization, devalue, and discard in every romantic relationship he's had. Every one of them. The underlying desire for control. An unshakable narcissism and the drive to do evil by damaging the lives of women who became his partners. That is the father of her children. Now usually women who have children with the worst men oftentimes have some little part of them that still loves that man because they share children. Right? Like it's a, it is a survival mechanism to think, you have to think that these men have some sort of <laughs> something good in them. Sure, that's what they showed you to trick you. And sure, maybe they like their dog, but this man hated women. He hated women. And if the, if the woman he was with probably, I think it was like the longest, had this to say about him. Okay. His, grand, his, his own granddaughter publicly decried him. His dehumanization and misogynic, misogynistic, beha misogynistic behavior uh, towards his romantic partner. The, the whole quote is like, oh my God. It's coming in a minute. This is how Picasso described women. Women are machines for suffering. His ex said that he viewed them as either goddesses or doormats. Which is just another form of like the Madonna, hmm, right? Ginger, Marianne, wifey material or Schmeg's worker. Like, I swear to God, these men are like that or that, right? And that is, that is like purity culture is all about that. Which is again, the many reasons why I have, want nothing to do with purity culture. The sentiment that women are machines for suffering is particularly sinister. <laughs> Coming from an artist who worked fr who, whose work frequently depicted the female form contorted into torturous representations of eyes, mouth, and... <laughs> so he regularly frightened women. This one woman, a uh, Lady Caroline Blackwood, who was a renowned author and an English noble, went to uh, Picasso's house to, to have a chat. During this time, he's creating pen-up style art that featured an autobiographical portrait leering at young women. How young? Uh, I'll let you guess. Upon reaching the top floor of the studio, he lunged at her. She said, all I felt was fear. I kept saying, go down the stairs, go down. He said, no, no, we're together above the roofs of Paris. It was so absurd. And to me, Picasso was just as old as the hills. <laughs> An old lech. Genius or no. Oh, I love that. But she said that to think of how many people he held he had up there. The way she saw it, like she was a wealthy, well-connected daughter, like nobility, published author, and that she recognized that a lot of women, maybe the teenagers that he had up there, may feel uncomfortable being like, no, and standing up to a man like this. Despite her fear, she stood up to him and talked about it publicly. But she knows that most women who visited this studio probably did not because they did not have the protection that she had being a rich I'm assuming white lady with a powerful daddy. He also used um, prepubescent girls as his model. So he would feature um, in various erotic poses. Even though he used adults for the finished thing, look at this. His original like sketches, he used mm -mm, young. Mm. Uh, just read this. God, this is the worst part. The young girl depicted was not named but it is believed to have been a young girl Picasso and his partner adopted from a convent. No one knows why they took the child in, but as soon as after he was done with this whole thing, she was returned to the convent. How much you want to bet? He convinced his wife to adopt a child. Oh, I want a daughter. And then after he used and abused her, he's like, you know what, never mind, I changed my mind. There's no telling what this man, oh God. He had a thing for young girls. 
They excited him. So, alleged, so supposedly there's no proof that he engaged in any inappropriate behavior towards tw children. Although even the way this whole article is written, it's like, uh, I'm sorry, a 17 year old is still uh, not an adult. Okay, I'm getting ahead of myself. I'm gonna get to that in a minute. So he also liked to give golden to women he wanted to cheat with. Look at this. <laughs> He lived to be 91, and he was courting women until the very end. During the, his 70s and 80s, he adopted this habit of sculpting tokens of affection for women with whom he wished to be intimate, and they were noticeably oversized. He made these in the home he shared with his second wife, and sometimes he handed these to women in front of her. That in and of itself is a form of abuse because she was like not okay with this whole thing. I mean, this old man was like into young girls until he died. Like, ta like this, this man is like the king of like age gap. At 79, he married a 27 year old. And this woman proved to be his greatest muse. This is the one he was handing out these mouths in front of her. He produced more art during their marriage than any other boy. I'm telling you, none of these men, these geniuses would have a career or fame or money or power if they didn't have women they were exploiting in that process. If you need uh, an example of what not to do of a woman who clearly has her own issues and ends up martyring herself like so many women I've covered in Hollywood who these men abuse and use and discard and then start a new life with, this is maybe the worst, one of the worst examples. Men have been doing this for a long time. She dedicated her life to being Picasso's muse and was jealous and possessive of his time and affection. Okay, whoever wrote this, fork you. I really don't like your way you're wording this. Jealous? That's like the people saying that Chelsea on Love is Blind is insecure. Yeah, we know she's insecure. But uh, given the interviews of other cast members, especially Jess Jessica or whatever, whatever insecurities women have, a man like this will make you insane. A man who cheats on you openly. Like, he's giving out a golden ballast and you know, oh, she's jealous of his time and attention. Who would it be? It doesn't sound like they were an open relationship because doesn't sound like she was allowed to fork other people. And you're gonna see from other examples, this man is the one who's jealous. He's the one who locked women up. He's the woman who forbid women to work with anyone else. This man is the jealous person. Any woman with this man, I am sorry, you cannot call her jealous. You can call her uh, suffering from the mind forkery of an abusive man. Picasso continued to take other lovers and mistresses, but she would not allow any enter to enter her home once the relationship became clear. Well, good for her. She stood up for one thing. And shocker, this goes back to why I'm saying don't marry men who have children because these kids, uh, first of all, the woman is usually going to be triangulated against them because of that man. But honestly, a woman who is putting up with all this stuff, like, it doesn't surprise me that she's going to punish his children and not want them in her life because she's already so insecure because these men will beat you down to the point where you have no self-worth whatsoever that isn't tied to them. So anything that threatens your relationship with this man you have martyred yourself for, that person's a threat. This is why women who are married to mon monsters like this end up being awful to other uh, all the other women and all the children and anyone associated with that man. These I'm not defending them. I'm telling I'm giving the mindset, right? When you have everything to lose and it hinges on your proximity and relationship with this one person, you will end up screwing over every, this is why pick me's are so dangerous. I have an enormous amount of empathy for pick me's. I think every woman under patriarchy is somehow on the pick me spectrum. Pick me cool girl toxic boy mom spectrum. You're one of those. You're going to be one of those on some level. You can't survive in patriarchy without being that on some level until you, until you get the tools and the resources to get away from your abuser and the gatekeepers. But look at this. This is so sad. He banned both of his children from his first marriage from attending his funeral. One of those children, one of his grandson, took his own life shortly after this rejection. So like, again, I'm saying that a lot of times people who are on the, the victims of violence end up causing a lot of harm themselves. I can't tell you how many women in my life have hurt me because they cannot accept the truth about the man that they love and their survival depends on believing this lie. I understand it. I empathize with it. 
But I do not associate women who do this because you will get hurt. But some people don't have a choice, especially if you are, you know, related to a, a pick me who is getting abused by a man. And then at the end, the this, this, this his, his wife is described as she's the last in a long line of women who seem to bleed themselves dry by catering to Picasso. And she herself died by uh, 13 years after his death. What, what do you have to live for if, if you have ruined your relationships with everyone, including yourself, in order to be with one man? So uh, he uh, held a woman hostage because of his jealousy. One of his early lovers before he was married. Uh, they moved in together in 1905. He immediately demanded that she stop modeling for other artists. Does this sound familiar? Oh, you have a thriving career? Why don't you be a stay-at-home mom? But without a prenup or any kind of me putting money into savings for you. Why don't you be a trad wife, a stay-at-home mom? And I will let you not work. A lot of these men will talk their wives into being a stay-at-home mom, which basically means you work 24-7. You are going to work harder than you've ever worked in your life, but not get paid for any of it. And you can't leave if you don't have money. She was posing for another artist, and he tried to forbid her from going. He even locked her in their apartment to physically stop her and made her model exclusively for him. She was the muse and the model for the early Cubist sculpture uh, head of Fer uh, Fernand... Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, I'm so sorry. I usually look up things, how to pro uh, pronounce them before I make these videos. And I'm in the video of the video, so I apologize for pos probably pronouncing that wrong. So their relationship lasted for several years, and he continued to be jealous during their entire relationship. Ke kept her locked in that apartment more and more frequently so she could not go out and even be in public with him. It's one thing when you lock her in so she can't work for someone else. It's another thing if you won't even go take her in public. He literally held her hostage. Which, thank you for at least acknowledging one thing here. This would be considered domestic violence. Oh, shocker. I swear, this man, literally all the things I talk about are in this man's story. Their relationship ended when she fell sick. <laughs> like, like all women who date men and marry them is six times more likely to be left if you get sick. Picasso, that's what he did too. When she got sick, he started seeking other women. Now, despite his treatment of her, they remain friends. Okay. <sighs> Don't be friends with men. I'm really questioning this friendship, okay? My guess is that somehow, like, she needed financial support from him because I I can't imagine being friends with a man who kept me hostage in my apartment or bid me from working. I mean, what? She doesn't have money. Why would she not be friends with him? And then also he ditched me once I got sick. Oh, God! I, swear, I hate it when people write this stuff and don't think of, like, the context. Oh, not only did he hold one hostage, he kept one. He kidnapped one. He enlisted his friends in the summer of 1960 to help him kidnap a woman with whom he'd madly fallen in love. Fallen in love. Okay, see, this is why I, whoever wrote this, what is wrong with you? This is not love. Men do not kidnap women they love. You cannot love someone that you possess and force beyond beyond their against their will to be with you. Like, I swear, like language is really important. So this poet, Guillaume, helped Picasso abduct Irene, whisked her away to the outskirts of Paris, attempted to hold her cap. She managed to escape. So if she tried to, if she escaped, that means she didn't want to be there, but willingly returned to Picasso about a week later. Look at the, look at this paragraph. Their rocky on and off relationship, presumably due to at least uh, in part to the kidnapping and captivity. Like if this was a joke, that'd be funny, but I don't think they're writing this as a joke. They ultimately decided to marry at the end of 1960. However, she changed her mind at the last minute and fled to Paris to reconcile with a former lover, an unnamed woman. And then they tried to use this being like, she was a lesbian. See, he wasn't misogynistic. Like whatever, uh, blah, blah, blah. So uh, like a lot of men, he visited um, Schmeg's worker. Apparently in Spain at this time, it wasn't all that uncommon for men to go to church Sunday morning, visit the brothels in the afternoon, and meet up for drinks in the evening to discuss religious politics and their experience at the brothel. At this time in Spain, uh, they didn't have the, ta it, like, I don't know, whatever. It, it, the culture is a little different than, say, the United States. Not like those men aren't doing it. They're just not, like, openly doing it. But now we're going to get into why Picasso was such a terrible human being trauma he would not deal with shocker and men who don't deal with their trauma take it out on people and become the very thing they hate one of the reasons picasso was so messed up is because of his daddy big surprise 
He was introduced to brothel cu- culture early in life by a father who is renowned to fre- <laughs> frequent brothels uh, quite frequently. Okay, shouldn't use that word twice in one sentence. If you're a writer, don't do that. His father, who was also an artist, would spend a significant number of evenings at brothels while his mother and sisters raised him. He himself lost his virginity to a Schmegs worker at the age of 13 or 14. Okay, can we rephrase that first of all? Lost his virginity at the age of 13 or 14 to a Schmegs worker. Unless, unless that, that Schmegs worker was also 13, 14, or a teenager. There's a word for that. There's a word for that. Uh, that would be grape. And I'm curious, <clears throat> uh, who paid for that? Assuming that, you know, that was not a freebie. Did his daddy pay for that? Because I'm guessing he did. I swear to God, y'all. That I, every man who harms women, not everyone, but a lot of them, who hate women, who want to dominate women, who, want, who harm women the most, besides the fact that patriarchy has taught them to dominate us and not even see us as human beings and all that other stuff, right? But the ones who are the worst at it are the ones who have serious daddy issues. And a lot of them are ones who were essay. I just did a video on this. Army Hammer won't deal with his trauma. I'm sure there's so much trauma in his family. But, you know, claims the priest um, essayed him when he's a teenager. I believe that. But instead of actually dealing with that, he eats women. Allegedly. And instead of Picasso actually dealing with, I know whatever, this was back, they didn't have all the resources we have now. But lots of people had way more trauma than Picasso. I promise you. And they did not torture women until the day they died. So, just saying, we have way more access to things now. He also had endless money. He could have paid to get some help. But no, he would rather kidnap and hold women hostage and um, grape girls. So if this is his villain origin story, it makes perfect sense to me. And so many men who have daddy issues hate their mothers uh, because of what their dad did. I actually want to say that I realize that it's not that my mom has no accountability in anything my dad did. She, like me, was raised under patriarchy, right? And has to unlearn some stuff. But I will say that it is documented that so many women will, and men, people, will blame mom for what dad did to them. I'm sure the reverse is true too. But I had to really take a look at why I was so mean, so mean to my mom. And it's because I never really was dealing with the stuff that my dad did. You know what I mean? Anyway, like so many artists I've talked about, it was the women that raised the, John Hamm, pretty, I think it was John Hamm. Uh, so many examples of these artist geniuses who literally torture women or just, you know, screw them over, exploit them. Um, you know, do the whole like, oh my God, oh my God, and then take everything from them and then discard them and go for another woman. So many of these men were cared for by women. Taken care of by women as children. And this is the payback women get. Like, also, and I don't know enough about this, I also want to point out another reason why Picasso is cracked is because I'm pretty sure he stole a lot of his stuff. African imagery. Like, the man, like, the, the, uh, like, I just, I, I hate this man now. I will never, not like I could afford it, but I would never own a Picasso. You, I don't want to, I don't, I will never go to a Picasso museum. I, that man, I don't care. He's not a genius. All of his art that he did was on the backs of women and other people he exploited. If you don't believe me, what trash he is, or, you know, and his ex wife Let's listen to the direct quote from his own granddaughter. She unflinchingly, Marina Picasso, described the brutal nature of her grandfather's relationships with women. (laughs) She said, uh, he submitted them to his animal sexuality, tamed them, bewitched them, ingested them, and crushed them into his canvas. Wow. After he had spent many nights extracting their essence, once they were bled dry, he would dispose of them. I cannot imagine saying this 
about my own grandfather. I talk a lot of crap about my grandpa because uh, he was an awful abusive man. There's still a part of me that loved him because he's my grandpa. This is seriously like the one of the most brutal testimonies about a family member I've ever If his granddaughter is saying this, and again, a lot of times kids, or sorry, like just people have more grace for their grandparents because they weren't raised, you know, usually like the grandpa and grandma are like nicer to their grandkids than their own kids. If the grandkids saying this, <laughs> it's bad. With this description in mind, it is uh, not surprising that two of Picasso's lovers, um, all, I don't even know if you want to call them lovers, prisoners maybe, uh, victim, again, language matter, uh, took their own lives after being subject to years of the abuse described by his great uh, granddaughter. The extreme submissiveness of mistress Marie Therese Walter, who had an illegitimate mistress, by the way, she was 17. Can we not call her a mistress? He literally, like, this is, she had an illegitimate child with Picasso and unalived herself four years after his death. She, like Jacqueline, appeared to be content, sacrificing everything of herself to exist as a muse for Picasso. She even lived in secrecy for almost a decade to hide her relationship with Picasso while he navigated his first marriage in the public eye. Okay, he was married when he started dating a teenager. Graping, grooming, preying on, those would be better verbs. He was married. So for 10 years, I mean, of course, he was like, shh, don't tell anybody. I don't want anybody to know I'm a pedo. So 10 years, he lived in secrecy. Uh, that would make anyone nuts. That alone. His second wife, you know, the one uh, who was with him till the end of his life, that he gave out those gold frolic things to whatever that they called jealous. <laughs> Um, even she often described, is often described as being much like, uh, the teenager and that she existed to be the muse for Picasso and was extremely dedicated to him. Uh, I don't know if dedicated is the right word. Uh, maybe mind controlled. And she eventually shot herself in the home that she had shared with him 13 years after he died. By the way, women usually tend to do less violent unaliving, uh, for many reasons. The fact that she shot herself may say something even more. So one of his biographers said uh, that both the teenager and his second wife were evidently prepared to sacrifice themselves on the altar of his art. I mean, yeah, you could look at it that way. Or you could look at it as them being groomed, gaslit, coercively controlled, financially abused, domestically abused, um, graped multiple times, emotionally, mentally, literally like every way possible, um, abused by this man. I don't know if they were like prepared to sacrifice themselves on the altar of his art. I would say he got pulled into his world and did not find or, or even know there may, there was a way out if there even was. Please, God, the way they talk about these women, this man. And re remember how I told you to be very scared of old men? Many reasons. They're always looking for a hospice wife. Uh, Candace Kelly is the one who came up with that term, by the way. That's my mutual. She's amazing. But remember, she she talked about this, and I made a video on this, talking about how predatory older men are. And then someone in my comment, thank you so much, said um, that some research had been done, and it's not public uh, knowledge yet. And I, I'm going to misquote this. But something like, even a man in his 80s or whatever, like this old, is still uh, like 10 times stronger than the average woman or something like that. Please, if that was you, can you please like correct it? Because it it, it made me feel so validated for uh, how many old men have taken advantage of me. And even though they seemed fragile, these men are not. These men are not. Also, again, like so many men, especially selfish, narcissist, or abusive men, he had a trend <laughs> that with, with his intimate partner, the moment they became ill, or ceased to inspire his creativity, he lost interest, moved on. After uh, Ferdinand became um, sick, he left her. When his first wife, Olga, had mental illness, it became worse, he took on more lovers as it became worse and redoubled his efforts to divorce her. When Eva also fell ill, took on a new lover and neglected her, only one woman was documented to have left him. And that's the woman from the beginning of the story that I'm going to get into soon. All the others were abandoned forced into an open relationship, one-sided one open relationship. That's what all these men 
seem to want. They don't want women to be uh, having a foot, a good old time. That it, it, oh God, I've talked about this before. So again, Picasso held all women to either the goddess or doormat status. And again, this is exactly what purity culture is all about, which is it is not good for anyone. Which is uh, just a reminder, whenever I talk about hooking up with dudes uh, and stuff like that and how it was empowering for me and I always do lots of nuance, being like, um, it can be dangerous, please be careful, I'm not telling anyone to do this, blah, blah, blah. I say all of that stuff. People are like, nah, hookups never benefit women. That is in this, in line with this. That is this. Do not shame women who like to hook up and not be in love ever on my page. Because that is this. That's this. This thinking hurts all of us. His first wife had a breakdown over his infidelity. Which again, do not do not let men talk you into an open relationship if that's not what you want. Because it'll drive you crazy. So shortly after Olga became sick with a gynecological trouble, I don't even know what that means. But it was not long after she had a child. So uh, the trauma of childbirth may have had an impact. And this, she had to have a surgery, an unknown surgery. Guess what? That's when he's like, I gotta cheat. Like, that's what he always says. I gotta have a lover. I'm entitled to that. And who is the lover? Oh, a 17 year old. That's when he's like, not only am I gonna cheat on you, I'm actually going to go full pedo. And quite literally hide her in a secret apartment so even even his close friends didn't know about her well that's probably a reason for that because you don't want your friends to know your mom this article goes on to say that she was you know the wife who had surgery she was socially ambitious and wanted to work on taming picasso to become a suitable husband yeah i'm sure i mean what 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 woman who's been with an abuser hasn't thought um you know why can't he go back to being the person he was when we first started dating or all the stuff that women are taught in terms of like mothering men and rehabilitating men i mean beauty and the beast is literally is about that but it goes on to say that she became fixated on picasso like making her look crazy like she was obsessed sounds like she was but you know what dating an abuser will make you obsessed and insane and do crazy things like follow him around while living out of a suitcase. But many of Picasso's friends considered her mad. You're crazy. Of course they did. Of course they did. Because women who date abusers always look nuts. At the end of her life, she asked to see her husband. Like while she was nearing her death and he refused. Because <laughs> that's he's just that big of a prick. He also betrayed a critically ill mistress. Now after he left Ferdinand due to her illness, he began seeing a friend of hers. Of course he did. Eva. Or is it Eva? Now, she was a talented businesswoman and helped market and sell his work. Gold digger. He's a gold digger. Gold digger. However, she was always quite frail and sickly. It is believed now that she was either suffering from tuberculosis or some sort, some form of cancer. And in 1915, when she reached the point of needing to be hospitalized, instead of being a supporting partner to her silly, silly, seriously ill uh, partner, took on another lover. Shocker! Picasso's concern throughout the period of her illness was chiefly himself. I mean, th you could literally be talking about like most men. <laughs> But look how he even described it. He described his life with her as hell in a letter to a friend and patron. Oh, and by the way, um, when his f first wife uh, found out about him being a mm -mm, by finding um, sketches of her. No wonder she went crazy. Can you imagine living with this man and just being like, uh, like, and then also finding out from the sketches that he did of a teenager? That he's a... Uh, mm -hmm. And by the way, when she was struggling with the gynecological trouble, that's when pro Picasso got um, a 17-year-old pregnant by graping her. And then soon after, God, this man, he met the surrealist painter Dora Maar. And when the two women met, he demanded he be picked between them. Oh my God, oh my God, look at this. He encouraged them to fight over him physically. And remarked later that it was one of his favorite <laughs> memories. This dude is legitimately a sociopath. But at the same time, like men are behaving like this all the time. They love for women to fight over them. That is why one of the biggest acts of rebellion against patriarchy is to become friends like I have with the women that your abuser or just like terrible ex uh, also dated. It, that is what I knew as a next level of healing. Remind me to tell you the longer version of that story. Oh, by the way, um, well, the teenager, Died by mm -hmm, 
after his death. So let's get back to Dora, a woman he wanted to go fight for him. See, what he liked about the teenager is that she was like light. Hello, purity culture. Okay, might as well just say she's pure. That's why purity culture and pedophilia are like this. I'm telling you. She was light in both physical appearance and energy. She was blonde, cheerful, and athletic, but she didn't stimulate him intellectually. Of course not, because she can't be all those things and smart. What he liked about Ma is that she was like the behind the, she was the person by the, behind the weeping woman thing. She was brooding and dark and a fellow artist who challenged Picasso. However, this man doesn't want a partner, even if literally another artist. No, 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 no. He turned his attention to a, you know, he, she got discarded too. And this time it was for a woman 40 years younger than Picasso. And then uh, Mar, the, the artist, fell into a deep depression. Literally any woman associated with this man, uh, like died or went like nuts. Look at this. Electroshock therapy. I'm telling you, these men will make you insane, unalive you outright or through your nervous system or through you wanting to unalive yourself from all of their abuse. Or if this was back in those days, would get you literally electro, like God. So after all that, she became a devout Catholic and was described as nun-like in her chastity. Oh, there we go. Independent woman, you know, like dark, blah, blah, blah. Now she has to go back to mm, pure, chaste. Uh, like seriously, this man, don't fall for this binary of being, you know, wifey material or like slut bag. I am both <laughs> and happy about that. And here's the other thing. He, um, the women that he took the most advantage of are the, the ones who are the most agreeable. Stop uh, being agreeable. Stop being nice. Stop, uh, like my goal in life is for most men to think I'm a bird. Not all men. The men who actually care about the opinions of, I don't want them to think that. But most men hate women. And I love it when they think I'm a bird. Because that means I'm not, I'm not agreeable. And I'm not enabling them. And I'm not falling for their crap. I Honestly, I don't want to die. So I don't care if they like me. Honestly, one of the most liberating feelings in my life. Now, when women don't like me, that's another story. Still working on not needing that like so desperately it hurts it hurts when women don't love me but men i'm like work off go on so now back to the one woman who left him who did not let him beat her down into submission when she left him he told her she would be nothing without him and he set out to destroy her career because again men are jealous of us vindictive hypocritical and all the things I talk about all the time. She said that he once said, you imagine people will be interested in you. They won't ever really just for yourself. It will only be a kind of curiosity they will have about a person whose life touched mine so intimately. Again, do not date men who compete with you. Do not date men who say things like this, whether outright or more negging. These men hate you and they will ruin your creative life and, and maybe like unalive you too. So after they split, Picasso and his influential friends in France, France's artistic and intellectual circles, waged what she described as a war on her, eventually forcing her to leave France and settle in the U.S. where she rebuilt her whole life and career and continued to paint until her death in 2023 at the age of 101. The only reason why she lived that long is because she got away from that man. I promise you, she would have probably lived 10, 20 years, maybe more, less if she had stayed with him. He would have unalived her through uh, one, her wanting to unalive herself or through her immune system. Autoimmune disease. That's how they get us. So now the museum in Paris is attempting to partly <laughs> redress this wrong when it opens with its new exhibition, uh, permanent exhibition with the master's work. Oh my God, shut up. That includes a room of her work. Uh, oh God, you know what? And we just get rid of him. But you know, now she's not being presented as his muse. There are none of the pictures he did of her or photograph. Instead, it concentrates on her as an artist in her own right. So by the way, Picasso also destroyed her possession, including letters to her from Matisse, demanded that a gallery stop representing her and insisted she no longer be invited to uh, exhibits at this place. France treated her even worse than Picasso. Look at this woman and this old loser. So 
not only did Picasso launch three lawsuits to prevent her uh, publication of her 1964 biography, Life with Picasso, 80 prominent intellectuals, 80 prominent intellectuals and artists signed a petition in the communist paper, uh, Les Lettres Françaises. I never do that on here. Calling for the book to be banned. So as all these French motherforkers who were just as bad as Picasso to her. The book sold a million copies and was translated into 16 languages, but the shunning of her work was what she described as a civil death. I can't imagine being that um, betrayed by an entire community of artists. Anyone who is an artist, you understand. Uh, your community is, without your community as an artist, it's really hard to survive. I mean, without community in general, but, oh my God, I, I hate this man so much. You know what I also ha hate is all these constant ads for this stupid uh, candlelight thing. I thought this was just in France. I've been to one. It was pretty cool, but literally, how can they afford all this advertising? Oh my God, really sorry about that. 10 years after a renovation, the Picasso Museum, which holds the world's largest collection of Picasso's work, has installed a new prominent exhibition in 22 red uh, room spread. Blah, 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 don't care, hate him. But she gets a little room in room 17 on the third floor. Oh, it's not, ah! I must have read something wrong before because this is a temporary. But it's, it's, it, it's expected to last a year. Fork off! Give her many rooms! But you know, the president of the Picasso Museum was, uh, was like, well, being, being given her right, she's given, being, she's being given her rightful place as, no. No, her rightful place would be actually to get be way more than one room. And for this man, like, I'm sorry. The fact that this man was such a predator, a schmegual predator, and his work is like the, these women, like, what? <gasps> so they're like, in, Fr in France, uh, you know, she's known as Picasso's companion, whereas in the United States, where she lived after 1970, she is considered an artist and a painter, so we have a room displaying her painting. Blah, 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 okay, it's not enough. I mean, I guess it's better than nothing. And then um, this person, who's a curator at the museum, said it's important to include a display of her paintings to dispel the idea that she was just uh, just his partner. Can y'all do a few rooms about how much this man was an abuser? Like, like you should not be teaching art history without also teaching this story. Like the history behind all this. And I don't know because I haven't been to this museum. Maybe they talk a little bit about it. But if they're not literally calling him a pen uh, it's not enough. They're like, yeah, it's true. After her book about Picasso was published, she was shunned by many people in the artistic community here in France. So we thought it's important to show her place in his life, but also that she was uh, just much more than his companion. After all, she spent 10 years with him out of more than 100, I guess, years of her life. Oh my God. Like, I mean, okay, it's better than most people are doing, but like, yay, bravo, here's your cookie. Uh, I, seriously, I know that this is a complicated subject. I know, like, there's so many artists that, you know, I mean, I, like, if we literally just like ban all art by um, problematic men, uh, there would be nothing left, really. If every movie that has a predator is not watched because of that one man as a predator, uh, but what about all the other people in that movie? Like, I understand this is all very complex. And as a artist myself, I understand, like, there's a the whole thing, like, our artists, oh, whatever. Uh, my point is that I personally will never buy, again, I can't afford, but, like, will never buy anything by Picasso. But tell the story. Tell the story instead of just being like, he's a genius, look what he did. Tell the story of him stealing stuff. Stealing his stuff, right? Like, again, I don't know enough about this, but I've seen enough uh, videos from very credible uh, historians being like, yeah, he just like took all this. All this stuff, like he took this, he stole this. These ideas, this uh, this way of doing it. And the fact that he exploited all those women. Okay, let just tell us. I'm not saying that this is all big secret, you know? Like Elvis, Charlie Chaplin, Picasso, just to name three. Like, hellos, hellos. 
like, what do we do about it? What we do is we keep telling these stories. We tell their survivor story. We center the survivors in those stories because I'm not saying ban all this art. I am saying give the real story behind all of it. Because I promise you, if I was rich and saw Picasso and be like, wow, that's beautiful. And it's Picasso. And then someone was like, yeah, that's actually a little girl that he had posing, um, spreading her legs. Um, for that, I would not buy it. Would you? Just saying. Tell survivors stories. That's why I make my work. And that's why I want other women to be able to tell theirs. Our stories matter.